We're off. We're off. We're off. Okay. We're off. Okay. Come and on, let's go. And let's have a quick look at Honey with her um, Australia Day. Uh, oh, oh. Okay, we'll see you down there. Well, I think we're going down to Rackstar. Come on. I think it'll be all right. What are you doing, Honey? And look at all the bloody dogs coming. And it's about, when I say that, I, I told Albia, he heard it once when I was half full. It's about my school. Celebrity Bush poet has recited for us uh, at Australia Day. Ken uh, is uh, a Victorian Open Bush Poets champion and is perhaps best known locally for his wonderful CD called Keeping Our Heritage Alive. Now this CD has raised over $3,000 in the Wagstaff Pretty Beach area alone in aid of the Westpac uh, Rescue Helicopter and Australian Flying Doctor Services. Now Ken will regale us with his original bush poem, Bundy's Mob. Good morning all and I hope you all have a wonderful Australia Day. It was back in 1948 when I first started school at a small country town in central New South Wales. And when I look back on those days, there's one teacher that always comes to mind. His name was Mr. Haraldine, and he taught us in fourth class. To him, the Greek kids from the calf were not wogs. The Aboriginal children weren't black, and the white children weren't white. We are all kids in his class there to learn. Bundy's mob. Thirty years had drifted by since I left my hometown. The main street hadn't changed that much. Some shops had been closed down. Outside the bank, beneath the tree, the bench seat still remained. The Royal Mailbox, painted red, was sealed but well maintained. On the bench, an old bloke sat, newspaper across his knee. His looks were sharp, his clothes were neat. His eyes stared straight at me. I know you, lad, the old man said. From days I taught at school, you're one of those who opted out. I thought you were a fool. It's Big Ben, came a voice behind. We called him Ding Dong then. I sat with him in fourth class, sir. Remember? Ding Dong Ben. His dad and mine were army mates. His mum was damn good too. When times were tough, we camped with them. It's them that helped us through. He took my hand. His face was black. His hair was silver grey. His check shirt held two pence, just right. His RMs cleaned that day. His eyes did gleam. He shook my hand as proud as proud could be. He's Haradine, our teacher, Ben. And remember, I'm Bundy. I was only 12 when I left that school and ran away to hide. It was years of fun and years of grog that landed me inside. When I got out from Bathurst jail, old Haradine was there. He drove me home to his place, Ben, and settled my despair. A trucking job he found for me. I took it in the stride. And now he owns a fleet of trucks, said Haradine with pride. I better run, mate, Bundy said. I'll meet you at the club. There's trucks to load for transport out beyond the Tilga scrub. Sit down, young Ben, old Haradine said. I'll remind you of the days when I started at the school up there and learnt this small town's ways. Bundy's mob, the Kalari kids, were a lot at school, in clothes dumped at the edge of town that white kids ridicule. A dirt track ran to their humpy camp out on Nagura Bend. No power, 
no water, no dummies. To whites, it did offend. The river ran by in times of flood. They camped on Reservoir Hill. No power, no water. The ground was shale, there's sheets of iron there still. Nagura camp was two miles out. Those kids must go to school, but not the mobs beyond five mile. That was a government rule. The white kids rode the blue school bus that came in from miles away. That bus was only for white kids, Ben. The mob walked all the way. The white kids sat at desks, some bundy sat on the floor. Their legs were crossed to hold their books in which they learned to draw. For morning tea, milk was served from Cairns Place neath a tree. White served first, enamel mugs. Glass jars for most bundis. If they reached year six and still at school, bundis had to clean the yard. Their job was way too hot for whites. The work was too damn hard. But white kids who mucked up in class and drove the teachers mad cleaned inkwells till their hands went black. Black was seen as bad. For Anzac Day, the school was taught to march the stone playground, but only those in uniform were allowed to march through town. It was a concrete pool down near the bridge where white kids learnt to swim. It was a river bank between the locks where Bundy's mob dived in. Some of Bundy's mob learnt fast, like white kids at bush schools, but when it came to sport, the mob made white kids look like fools. When they left, they drifted away to the west and further beyond. Most in the town or at the school didn't know they'd even gone. Some stayed here in this white man's town to become domestic hands, barred from pubs, shunned in shops, left the taxi stands. At the movie house, their tickets sold through a hole in the lane side wall for wooden seats under the screen. Not allowed upstairs at all. Sly Grog was sold in flagons then. From behind the old royal pub, they sat and drank it neath the bridge or somewhere in the scrub. The green dodge the policeman drove had a mesh crate round a tray. This held the mob they said were drunk. They were always on display. It was the 70s, Ben. Old Harradine said he picked up his paper to go. They got their flag, that tent embassy. Still, acceptance is very slow. Most thought it a shame that they were allowed to camp out on that lawn. We're still judged by the colour of skin and the place where we were born. I remember those days, old Harradine told, those days when all seemed right. That's the way we thought about life back then. It was seen as black and white. The Harradine type who took the time to learn the Kalari way. In those western towns was oh so rare. And I think it's the same today. When I left that bench where Harold had sat, it was Bundy on my mind. His strength came from Kalari blood. His culture, not decline. We all could learn from Kalari ways the way they treated this land. If we acknowledge the past, our prejudiced ways, and just try to understand. Thank you, Kenta. Now it's uh, time for a...
no return while we're on the way. Share a dream and sing with one voice. 